not the usual podcast setup, but um, this podcast, uh, the goal of it was to always, um, you know, open the discussion about mental health and deeper thinking. Um, it started off with uh, me and my buddy Nick, um, us two just shooting the shit and, uh, you know, just talking about life, you know, um, it's ironic because I never thought that this would be a thing that would save my life. And I'll explain, um, you know, I have guests on all the time, you know, athletes, influencers, um, people with stories from the neighborhood. And I, I, right, I sat and I realized this morning, um, today is January 9th, Monday. Um, I've had a lot of, I've had a series of losses, uh, this past few months, um, in life and people and in general. And I feel like I tell all these stories on, you know, on the podcast every single week, but never told mine. Um, and I feel like now as the new year is happening and we're really starting to figure out what we want and plan our years. Um, I figured I would tell you guys my story. Um, why we're even here, why I, you know, have this set up or why this podcast is even a thing or why I'm doing all the things that I'm doing and a little bit of the motivational factor behind me. Um, this is just, something I feel like I need to do. Um, never, I'm not usually good at opening up, but, um, you know, I use this, this platform that I've built or I'm currently building to allow people to tell their stories. And I've never used it to tell mine. Um, I don't know how long this is going to be, but, yeah, I figured why not. Um, so, you know, growing up, uh, you know, I grew up as a typical Northeast kid, right? Went to Archbishop Brown High School in Philadelphia. Uh, went to grade school at Our Lady of Calvary. You know, I played basketball my entire life. Uh, that was like my, my, you know, everything, right? You know, when you're young, that's, it's sports that, you know, really you, you, you hold on to when you're younger. You know, it's, it's that activity that you're, it's put in front of you, right? Before, before life gets real, before things get, you know, serious. Basketball was my life. Um, it was my escape. It taught me so much, you know, hard work, you know, wanting to be the best. And, um, you know, it's got me through a lot, you know, so basketball was something that meant a lot to me growing up. Now my dad, you know, grew up to two beautiful parents, um, Mike Nichols, Trish Nichols, my twin sister, Haley, you know, we both play basketball. And, um, you know, my parents taught me a lot about being consistent, working hard. Uh, they both played at Holy Family University basketball. That's how they met. Um, but it would be a basketball family. And so basketball was always a huge part of me growing up. Uh, I lost someone. I, I, uh, you know, I, I had my first loss. Um, it was my grandma when I was 16 years old. And at the same time, I lost my girlfriend at the time who you know, was happy and, and doing her thing and I'm doing my thing. And that's besides the point, um, I think. But I think that point, losing two people at the same time was super difficult for me. Going through that breakup um, and losing my grandma at the same time, it put me in a really dark place. Um, it put me in a, a place of confusion. Uh, you know, my first taste of having someone and losing them and not knowing really how to cope with it. Losing my first love um, to mistakes I made because of my immaturity. Um, it just put me in a really bad place. And, uh, you know, having to go into high school the next year and seeing her with another guy in the hallway while you're still heartbroken and wondering why she isn't, why, you know, wondering why how she moved on so fast. Um, those type of things can really make your mind just 
go to a place that it never should. You know, it can really take you to a really dark place. And that's what it did for me. You know, that at that point in my life, everything was so good before that. You know, everything was so grand and, and so beautiful and so happy and the holidays were the best and all, you know. And um, at that point, when I lost them too at the same time, you know, break up, lose your grandma, you know, you can consider one of your best friends, you know. Um, I learned that life isn't always great. Um, and during that struggle, I, I really questioned myself and my worth. Um, granted, self-inflicted wounds with the breakup and you can't prevent cancer from happening. But I really self-reflected on myself and thought it was I really good enough. And my biggest response to that was to always do the most or try to put myself out there as much as I can or be seen by everybody so I can get validation or so she can see it or, you know, stuff like that. And I built that habit up. I felt like I had to prove myself to her or, you know, everyone. It was like that constant struggle of like trying to get her back, you know. And um, it ended up just, you know, breaking me as a person, you know, putting in all this effort towards something, you know, granted it was too late, but, you know, me at the time not knowing, 16 years old, putting in that effort towards something and and getting nothing from it, um, it really damaged me as a person, you know, throughout the rest of my high school and even college to a degree. I think it's why it's led me down this road of trying to put stuff out every week or just DJing or anything like that. You know, I think it led me down a path of um, just trying to be somebody. I don't think of myself as a significant person, but like I'm trying to get myself there. I think it's the chip on my shoulder I've had my entire life, whether it's people playing over me in basketball or people talking shit or anything. You know, I've always had a chip on my shoulder and, um, you know, having things go against you, odds be stacked against you, or at least that's how you feel, you know? I feel like my entire life has been a love letter to those who have told me no, constantly feeling not good enough or constantly feeling like there's an uphill battle waiting to be to happen. Um, that's how I perceive my life. You know, that's how I perceived a lot of things in my life. You know, I think it's led me to this moment here, oddly enough. Um, like I said, I've had a series of losses this past few months. And um, as the new year begins and we're doing our dry January, um, I just think it's a really important time to reflect and for you guys to learn a little bit about my story. You know, and I guess I'm um, using this episode here, you know, as I'm feeling all these emotions of of some losses um, in my personal life, uh, feeling losses, you know, just with this feeling that I have right now in this point in my life, I'm, I guess I'm using, except using this episode to document this. I'm not anywhere yet. I don't have any type of, you know, I'm not, I'm not where I want to be yet, you know, but I'm working my ass towards it. And I think it's just important for me to talk about why I'm here and how I got to this point. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not anywhere yet. You know, um, but I believe that this is going to be a turning point for me. Um, I have goals and aspirations to be bigger than my surroundings, or at least I have goals and aspirations to leave a legacy or to leave a mark, you know, something bigger than me. Throughout my entire high school and grade school and even college to a degree, I always felt like I was never, I never really fit in, um, I never felt like I belonged. Um, And my, I felt very out. I felt very, uh, I felt like I, I, like I said, I just felt like I didn't fit in. So I felt very left out of a lot of things. Um, Whether it's me not being able to relate to people in my grade or you know, anything like that. I always felt like I just never really fit in. You know, I think it was a confidence thing, I guess. But I don't know, your gut doesn't lie to you. 
um, a lot of my friends were older and shout out to Matt Diver, Kev Cook, Eddie Petrasovitz and, you know, the, all that whole entire crew. Um, those were my best friends growing up and they still are my best friends. Um, but like I said, every single day I was fighting to earn a spot, you know, on the basketball team or earn, fighting to earn a spot socially. Um, you know, that's why I did all these things going to college. I had temple parties all the time. I had a party house, I had all these things, you know, and, uh, like I said, never really felt like I fit in. You know, I was going to drop out of college. I went for entrepreneurship, went for business and then switched to, um, you know, media and production. I told my mom I was going to drop out unless something happened. Something needs to change. My life wasn't, I wasn't, I was always, I always felt like I wasn't where I was supposed to be constantly. I always feel like that. Um, and that's a personal issue I have, but that's here nor there. Um, so she said transfer or, you know, switch to media and production. So I switched to media 2018. I moved to LA for six months and that was the greatest six months of my life. Um, I felt like I was finally myself. I was finally free. And, um, you know, I felt like I was myself. You know, I was in the place where it was to be somebody, you know, it was, I was in that place of, Oh, LA, the, the celebrities, the, the influencers, like the people you're around, you know, I always, tr you know, you, you are who you surround yourself with. And I've learned that so much these past few years. Um, and, um, yeah, you know, I come home from LA from the greatest six months of my life. It's back to the same old stuff, right? You know, I came back depressed, right? I trained my brain that LA is where I was supposed to be, you know? This is where I'm supposed to be. This is how my life is supposed to play out. You know, and I was clearly wrong. And I learned that, um, you know, it's all about what you make of the situations you have, right? The place you're in now. How do you, that's what truly I feel like defines a person is how you handle the situation you're in, not where you should be. And that, like I said before, like that was my biggest issue. My biggest flaw is I constantly felt like I needed to be somewhere else. So I never truly felt present in where I was. Um, and you know, in college, um, I never really applied myself. You know, only time I applied myself was when it was convenient for me, right? Going to LA or having an internship. Other than that, not really. You know, I never really meant to build any meaningful relationships besides a few people. Um, had parties all the time. I disrespected my roommates by having these crazy parties. You know, I never really truly career wise built myself up. I hated school and it was cause the way my mind thought about school, right? My grandma, shout out to Sue, Sue Dixon. Uh, she's probably one of the most inspirational people in my life and one of my one of the people I look up to the most, my grandma, my mom's mom, she told me one day that when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And it's like it opened up a whole other, you know, part of my brain. It's all about perspective and how you see things. And looking back now, at my college experience, I realized that I perceived it as something I was forced to do. I always told my mom, I'm getting this piece of paper that said you graduated. This is for you. I'm giving this to you, right? This isn't for me. I didn't graduate for me. I didn't bust my ass in school for me. I did it for you. Um, you know, but a little did I realize, you know, I had all these opportunities in front of me and I kind of squandered them. You know, I think I took LA, you know, by the horns and which was great. But a lot of opportunities I just go on and, and, and I didn't realize that right away. I was lucky enough to go to college, you know, not that college is for everybody. Um, I'm actually against school, but that's a different conversation. Um, that's, it depends on the person, right? But back to the point, my grandma taught me about perspective and how you look at things. And the, the irony of it all is that the piece of paper I wanted for my mom that I worked so hard for my mom didn't even come, didn't even get it in the mail. So she never got it. 
graduated school 2019 boom 2020 COVID hits right everything shuts down life changes entirely everything just switches up I lost all my DJ gigs I lost everything right or at least I thought the summer of 2020 I was down the shore every single weekend drinking right whether it was at a hotel or someone's house um i remember specifically um granted i had great times but i think towards the end of the end of the summer i really felt i overstayed my welcome a little bit um you know i uh i was down there and remember it was the 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 riots were happening and um <laughs> i had a tra- i was down the shore i drove down for the weekend and i had a trash bag of clothes and a bathing suit i'm like yeah i'm only staying down for two days i'm not gonna need anything else and uh you know the riots happened they closed the bridges everything's closed down and uh i get a text from my buddy yo the bridges are closed you can't come back to philly i'm like all right i'll just chill on the boardwalk for a little bit and wait in Wildwood and I get a text from someone in Seattle saying hey come stay with us you can stay with us if you need to I was like okay so I had a, a bag of clothes and I lived in Wildwood for an entire week and I drank every single day had no money no responsibilities and no job <laughs> that I had nothing I spent all the money I had down the shore you know um, I had no concept of money no concept of savings or anything and I used alcohol to suppress my emotions you know living out of a a trash bag with you know a pair of pants a shirt and a bathing suit for an entire week I didn't want to go home and I don't know why I use alcohol to drain you know to flush out my emotions or at least to numb my emotions this entire summer that's what it was that's what it turned into it didn't start that way but that's what it turned into I had no drive, no motivation, didn't see anything ahead of me. I didn't. I really didn't. Um, I, you know, looking back on it, I'm like, I'm like disgusted in myself. I didn't do anything bad or crazy. It's just the, the idea of me looking back and thinking, wow, my entire life was just to go down the shore and, and, and do and and do nothing productive. Living out of a trash bag for a week in Sea Isle at someone else's house, like who, who you know, <laughs> like, like I said, I use alcohol to to numb something and to suppress something in me. The darkness that that pit that I felt like from when I was sixteen years old and and heartbroken and and lost. I feel like there's been a huge fog over my head the past 10 years and like you know you're not much to be excited about there's nothing really to look forward to can't explain why it must have been me not healing properly and just let allowing that to carry through the rest of my life up to this point so i come up from the shore i believe it's august at this point my sister asked me to write her a song and this is where the, the origin of the podcast came about my sister asked me to make her a song. I, I do music. I enjoy music. It's very therapeutic for me. I, I think I built up a, a bit of a talent for it. I started it four years ago. And um, shout out to Kit Travis, by the way, my friend Jed. And, uh, you know, Rahi, Matt, you know, Sony and, you know, Shah and all them. Um, shout out to you guys for getting me in the music and helping me out with making this all, I feel like all this possible, essentially. Um, and... My sister asked me to write her a song, and this is before the podcast even started. This is August, November, um, and um, I was like, "All right, you know, I make her something." She, this is random. I made I made like a random song. And I showed it to her. She wanted me to make one for her. I said, "Sure," and I really thought about what I should write about, right? <laughs> and uh, in probably two days, I made this song, and it was a song called "Free." Um, if you remember going back on my YouTube, I made a song called Free. And the idea behind Free is that 
you're not happy, you're not where you're supposed to be because you're not free. And it felt like the song wrote itself, which is insane. Because, I, like I said, I don't consider myself a significant person or a very talented person. I just feel like I work hard. And the song flowed out of me. And then it was a song that, you know, and it's a song that I, when I showed it to her, brought a lot of emotion to both of us. You know, it's the love I have for my sister, you know. It's tough, you know, seeing the person you love, your twin sister, go through stuff like this mentally, being bullied, being body shamed. You know, you're constantly in defense mode when you're with her because you don't you want someone to say something smart, you know. And this song was just a love letter to her, you know. So I had to write that all down and, and, and sing it and make the instrumental and put it all together. Did that in two days. I don't know how I did it, but it was something I really take pride in, a song that I really enjoy. Um, and... The idea was to interview her and talk to her about what she struggles with and goes through. Um, And my buddy, I told my friend Nick about it. And I said, and I said, um, yo, like I'm doing this, like this interview with my sister, like for my song. He's like, oh, it's like a podcast. I was like, I don't even know what a podcast. <laughs> I know what a podcast is. I never listened to one, done one, anything. And um, he's like, "Yeah, yeah, we should do one." I'm like, "What? Like a podcast? Like, what are you talking about?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, we'll just you know, record ourselves talking. We'll talk about life. You know, the, the conversations we always have." And I was like, "All right, sure, I'm like cool." Let's do it. Comes over, we grab some wine, and we sat for two hours. And it's called "It's Okay Not to Be Okay." It's episode one. We filmed it. This is two years ago on December 8th. We filmed it on December 8th of 2020. And we sat for two hours and talked about life and everything we've been going through. And and just, you know, just we tried to make it about mental health, right? Got like 1.7 thousand views, 1.5, whatever. And for me, I was like, okay. Seems pretty, you know, cool. Okay, people seem to like it or at least are curious about it. You know, they, they, they you know... They uh, they either want to see see it succeed or they want to <laughs> sit and watch it fail, and I can't blame them for either either one. You know, it was this kid that put himself out there when he was sixteen and and tried being this person, trying to be somebody. You know, you can blame someone for trying to be somebody nowadays, but you know that's that's the price you pay for doing that. You know, DJ kept the first, my first nickname. The worst nickname ever. I never promoted it after I I, I, I told people because it was so bad. Uh, I was 16 years old. And, um, you know, we started the podcast. And from there, my mind really, really, this is where I feel I could save my life. Because... Never talked about this. But, um, this is where the old me died. You know, the old me who settled for what he had or settled for the places he was in or settled for whatever he was going through right like in grade school and in high school and somewhat college you're given this root of you're given this root of what to do right like you're in grade school you're in the school you're, you're your friends are shown to you you're you don't really choose your friends you kind of they're kind of it's kind of you're kind of in this neighborhood where everyone's in ed together and whoever gets along gets along you know it's like you're kind of thrown into this environment but when you're out of school and you're out of college to where life really challenges you to choose and make your choices wisely. Um, I feel like with this podcast is when I felt like I was kind of like reborn in a way. And it sounds, <laughs> it sounds crazy to think about, but for me, it's like, for me, it was always, what's the next guest? How can I make it better? How can I make it bigger? How can I improve what we already have? Um, and for me, it was this, the podcast and just thinking, I think about it every day, you know, just, how, what kind of guests can I have on? What kind of stories can I tell? And my biggest passion is helping people. 
I love, no matter how I can, I love to just offer a lending hand. It's just something I, I enjoy. It gives me that, that feeling of like fulfillment, you know, that everyone's always looking for. And I was able to do that through conversation. I didn't feel like a loser anymore. I didn't feel like that kid in 2020 drinking down the shore anymore. I feel like someone with actual purpose and it, and it's just grown to so many more things and it's, and it's helped me in so many aspects of my life, you know? Every single aspect of my life started to change. How I thought about myself as a business, how I thought about the people around me, you know? We had uh, Bryn McMahon on second episode. Um, she, when she was younger, she jumped in front of a train and tried to end her life. And uh, she now lives in a wheelchair and loves to talk about it. And she's an advocate and she's one of the best people that I know. And I met her in my second episode and he told her story, right? And the reception was great. You know, it was people were, were, were talking about it and people were sharing it and people were, were relating to her and they were, and they saw her story and they could, you know, relate to it or at least take something from it. For me, that's what I fell in love with. And, um, you know, it just, it just kept going. It just kept going and the new guests kept coming. And I think what it taught me is to take every week, take every single week, you know, at a time, every guest is different. Every story is different to edit 73 episodes, 72 episodes to this point. It's crazy. You don't think about it, right? At 72 times, <laughs> it's a lot. You know, over two years, but and I fell in love with it. And um, it's really brought me some amazing people in my life. And um, one of the people that it brought me is um, Megan Cohen, um, the founder of The Grace Project, the nonprofit that I work with. Um, I saw her on Facebook and had her on and I DM'd the, I think I DM'd her, the Grace Project, whatever one. I told him to, told her to come on with her sister. And, um, you know, she came on and she told her story and it was great. And it was awesome. <laughs> and it was, you know, it was fun. I had a good time. And she told me to come out to Kensington. I said, you're out of your mind. <laughs> I said, you're out of your mind. And, um, so a few months go by contemplating it eventually I go out and another thing that saved my life it's funny you um it's funny you uh always find the things you're looking for when you least expect them that's the biggest thing that, I, that life has taught me you know um or in, in weird in weird ways I never volunteered. I am not in a, I'm not in recovery and I don't, I don't, I never listen to podcast, never listen to podcasts or anything like that. But I put myself in those positions to do it. And it's ultimately what led me to doing it. Um, you know, you stay in the barbershop long enough, you're going to get a haircut, right? And you, you keep at it, what you're doing, what, what you love and what you care about. Like the law is my baby. As you can't tell, I have, you know, a bunch of cameras, studio set up that I built for myself, you know, new mic, microphones, like everything, you know, it's like, it's just the more, it, but it, it never started like this. You know, that's the important thing. It was one ring camera, one camera, and, uh, and that was it, <laughs> you know, and it, it, like I said, it didn't start off that way, but, um, just funny what time and commitment can do and discipline. But not even discipline. But um, it brought me to Meg Cohen, right? The Grace Project. Volunteered. First time. Was scared out of my mind. Didn't know what was going to happen. Um, and then started really coming. I started coming every week. Just volunteering. Giving out food. And just, you know, just taking, you know, just being out there. Being present for people in Kensington, you know. Never understood it. Just went out because Meg asked me to. I figured I'll take the chance. And um, kept coming out, right? And 
being in Kensington and, and that whole, and this experience, um, it showed me so many things that life hasn't showed me before, you know, like show me, it still shows me to this day, it shows me patience, it shows me kindness, it shows me what it means to truly connect with another human being, someone who needs your help, right, and you are that lifeline to them, you know, it showed me, like, just what it means to just truly love another person, not knowing a single thing about them, right, just their, just their circumstance, you know, they suffer from a disease. It taught me how to be grateful for what I have. You know, going down on every Thursday, I look forward to it. You know, we are amazing volunteers. We have such amazing volunteers. And I'll tell you a quick story that brought tears in my eyes every time I think about it. Uh, it's one week in Kensington, and it's, it's, it's crazy, the contrast, because this one, the one week... We had this older guy who was in Kensington and he was struggling with addiction and he just wanted to get clean. And he brought it up to, to me and said, Hey, like, how do I get clean? And that's our goal down there. And, and so I called Megan and I um asked her how to help. And she said, just, you know, what kind of treatment does he need? What kind you know? Long story short, one of our volunteers was able to get him into a hospital. And uh, he said, he said to me, he said, wow, now I get to go fishing again with my friends or I have the chance to. And I said to him, this is your second chance at life. This is your chance. You know, and he was so excited to get into the car and go to the hospital. And I have, he hasn't been back in Kensington since. I don't know where he is now, but it's that type of stuff that there's opportunities I never had before. It's crazy. Like now I have the chance to help people like that, you know, and, and it's because of like, Stuff that me, that I'm doing, you know, Megan, Madison, like the, my best friends are doing, like we're all doing this together and it's like, now my friends want to get involved and they want to volunteer and then people in the neighborhood who see what I'm doing want to volunteer. They want to get involved. They want, everyone wants to help others. They do. They're, you just got to give them the opportunity. And it was so, such a humbling experience because I was able to come home to my family that night, you know? Stuff like that, man, puts things in perspective. And it's stuff that I would never have had two years ago down the shore drinking like a loser. You know, it's fine to drink here and there. But when you're when it's consuming you and you're not getting you're not growing as a person, that's when it becomes a problem. I used to never care about anything. You know, I never really had something to take pride in. You know, yeah, I was DJing since I was 16, but. You know, it never really took myself seriously as a business until I started all this. And, you know, it's it's just crazy. Like, I, it's just something I care about so much and so deeply. And I don't know why. And I'm not even questioning it. You know, it, it's just kind of how it is, you know. <laughs> and, you know, for those who don't know, The Grace Project is a 501c nonprofit founded by Megan Cohen. And our goal is to restore hope. It's so funny just thinking about this, like, it's so funny, me putting those words out there, me wearing the Grace Project hoodie, it's like, I was that person, you know, hopeless. Now it's what I do on a daily, daily basis. Um, it's just crazy to me. Just saying, saying those words, it kind of just hit me again. 
um, you need to have a certain conviction in what you're doing. I've learned that. You know, when you believe it and you put that effort towards it, that's when the universe starts to work for you. That's when you start to grow. You make mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. You make changes necessary, you know? And that's when people around you start to see when you have that conviction. There's nothing that can waver that, you know? I think growing up, I always wanted people to like me. I was such a people pleaser, and to a degree, I still am. But I'm learning. And I'm learning to make my own choices before life decides to make them for me. And I think that's happened to me a lot recently. And as the new year begins, I'm really trying to hone in on the fact that, like, I need to understand who I am and what I'm doing. And I do. But, you know, everyone has their those, those days, those flaws. Um... And it's funny because it all leads back to the podcast, right? It's it's introduced me to such amazing people, you know, at a point where I was, you know, I have my own, I run a house now in Fishtown where I was scared shitless to ever move out of my house. You know, I was, I was scared to ever do anything great. I don't think I'm anyone great, but I'm trying to be. The podcast, the loft, everything that it stands for, starting it, it ignited something in me that I can't explain. It's the, it gave me a drive to want to start putting myself out there. It made me want to start growing as a DJ because it's certain guests, shout out to DJ nine, Eddie, um, you know, having people like him on and seeing how successful these people are, you know, it, it motivated me. It didn't deter me. It motivated me. You know, it made me believe, oh, you know what? Like, he's super talented. Or these DJs are, you know, these people I'm, ha- I'm having on, they're super talented. But I, I can do that. I have that. You know? Um, and, yeah, the, the loft has ignited something in me. It just gave me a purpose again. It gave me something to believe in again. And, you know... 16 years old, heartbroken, lost your grandma, lost, don't think you're ever going to go anywhere, don't know how you're going to recover, but time, you know, may take you 10 years, may take you 20 years. Fle- you know, feelings are always fleeting, you know, um... And the Grace Project and, and all these things have brought me closer to a lot of people that I love. And it's it's truly, um, you know, life life's really shown me who who really care, who cares about me and who doesn't. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I've done a lot of bad things to, to a lot of people. And I think there's those are things I can never rectify. Um, and you know exactly who you are. Um but I guess this is me taking accountability of that and owning up to it and apologizing for it in a weird way. But life's been very fortunate to me though. It's brought me a lot of great people in my life. People I would never expect. You know, when I was 16, 20, it always comes back to when I was 16. Um, I started DJing my, my, my first DJ gig. Um, I had my first DJ gig at 16 probably the worst gig of my life my very first one um and it was a, a family party it was like as a, a girl on my sister's basketball team i won't name her um and it was at like some like ymca hall right and um it was uh, at some hall and my aux cable was broken so I had to hold the cable up. And so the audio would play. I had people come up to me, ask me to play their sound class stuff. Cause it was all kids my age that I didn't know. And, uh, worst four hours of my life. And I didn't even get paid for it. <laughs> she didn't pay me. She never paid me, never responded, never anything that, that, that $200 
that I was going to get. I was so excited for it, never got it. That was my first taste of DJing. That was my first taste of it. <laughs> DJing would have broken all cord. Would have um, with, with a crappy, you know, stuff. Crappy, you know, old. Excuse me, old equipment that my cousin Eric gave me, and that's another person I want to thank too. You know, my cousin Eric, um, Eric Naduchin, just had a kid, got a house, has a beautiful wife. Um, you know, he he got me into it, and he made me. He found my side hustle that I love. Dearly, I love DJing more than anything in this world. It it gives me a certain rush, a certain feeling, you know, of like, of just like that that feeling when you play the right song and you play, you're with the right crowd. You know, you, you have a huge crowd. It's what every DJ wants, and that's why you know have a lot of these DJs on the podcast. And they they'll say the same thing. They also they also mention the same thing as be a good person, and that's what my cousin was to me. Um, he gave me all my equipment, got me started helped me with music, everything. Like, so if it, was, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. Um, and, you know, as I'm, as I'm still DJing family parties and stuff, you know, I never really took myself seriously. I guess it was like a confidence thing because I was, you know, not confident in myself or wanting to put flyers out of myself or anything. Um, like I said, it's after the podcast and starting to do that and build my confidence up with that and then post every week and and innovate the clips or innovate the the editing innovate the 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 equipment the software anything start to build that confidence up for yourself i think it's the biggest thing i'll tell people is that you need to realize like hey like you have something right there's something you want to do do it you never know what can happen DJing has brought me some of the best people in my life. Rob Rudolph he used to be a coach to the pod, one of my best friends in the fucking world. Uh, brought me, you know, Dennis Hannigan, kid who I used to. <laughs> we used to not like each other, but we got close. And I learned he's really, really great. He's a really great guy when you get to know him, even though he's a Cowboys fan. Um, you know, so many people. My roommate Chris Graham, you know, one of my best friends, one of my brothers. You know. I can I can go on forever, right? But it's brought me some of the best people in my life at a time when I didn't have anyone. I had another falling out with someone I won't name, and uh, they all got together and decided to bash my name and bash me on, you know, and put it all over social media, and I didn't respond to it. It got sent to me probably 50 times, and I didn't respond to it. And um, this is another turning point in my life as well. Um, seeing that at the time didn't affect me, honestly it made me laugh, really did. But, um, when I saw some of the people who were in the room, they get showed me a lot. And, um, I feel like I was really, really, really on my own for a little while until Madison Thompson Got me and her got really close again. Um, Madison Thompson was at my party house all the time at Temple, you know, and we end up getting really close again, reconnecting. And she's probably one of my best friends. She looks out for me more than anyone in this world, and I'm super grateful for her. And uh, one, you know, one thing that Madison taught me in the time that we've been close is loyalty. You know. She's showing me more loyalty than I've ever seen in my life. And sometimes I don't know how to accept it or the care or somebody caring about me. You know, I've been through so much shit with either relationships or past friendships. She showed me what true, true loyalty looks like. Undying loyalty. (laughs) She'll tell you sometimes too much, you know, but like she showed me that. And show me what it's like to be a real friend, what a true friend looks like. And I'll never forget that, you know? Um, so Madison, like, thank you. Um, and that one shitty thing that happened to me ended up being one of the best things that happened to me. And, um... It's it's gave me confidence. It's given me guidance. These people who give me conf like these people who just give me guidance. Megan, Madison, 
Rob, Chris, Dennis, all these people in my life, Frank, I can go on forever. Dom, I can go on forever. But I've like really built this like group of people that really care about me. And I think even when I was playing at Noto, I really learned that too. You know, and, and I don't know if anyone else has this issue, but I have such a huge confidence issue when it comes to like who actually cares about me and who loves me. You know, I'm like going through shit all the time. You're kind of just, and having people come in and out of your life, you're kind of just like, relationships are kind of nothing to you in a weird way. And I think that was a huge issue I have too, is just like not being able to maintain relationships well. And that's something that the podcast has taught me as well. Is like you're connect when you're connecting with these people, like to really connect with them and to listen to them, you know? And that's why I love it so much too, is that like, I'm able to just connect with people on a real level. They, they open up and they tell their stories and their stories are shown to hundreds of people, you know? So I'm going to get emotional, but the listeners, the people who come up to me at the bar, the people who have such kind things to say, the people who support the podcast and make it what it is and who share it, who like it, who tell their friends, who post about it, you know, what it means to them. The biggest thing that I think about every single day, um, that I think about every single day that keeps me going and shout out to you if you're watching this, um, there's a woman, I won't name her who son passed away. He's like, it was like last Christmas or two Christmases ago, I guess, if you're counting this one. Um, his son died of like an overdose. And it was a really hard time for her and her family. She told my mom that she, um, She listens to the podcast before she goes to sleep at night. It helps her sleep. Whenever you're going through shit and you're struggling and you question why you do things, even as little as this or anything. It's moments like that, that it's the moments like that that make you realize why <laughs> you have three cam three cameras or <laughs> a basement dedicated to a studio or new guests on every week or improving things and It's shit like that. And DMs I get from so many kind people. And people who just are so positive about it. And then you kind of wonder like. I did that. Because of something. <laughs> I, I did. I think it's um it's funny I, I go through this all the time but I feel like um sometimes I think I can't do things or I'm surprised that I do or I don't think it's actually me doing it <laughs> as weird as that sounds but sometimes when you take accountability when sometimes when you take accountability and you realize that is you you realize the good you can do and I think that's what I've learned this year and going into this year, that's what I'm really learning to hone in on. And I hope anyone watching this, if you're still watching this or listening to this, that you can understand that, you know, you can do shit. <laughs> you can do shit. It doesn't matter where you're at. I always thought I had to be somewhere else. I always thought I had to be in L.A. I always thought I had to be different places. But like when you realize how much your life can change in six months. 
six months is all it takes to change your life. In six months, I started a podcast. In six months, I joined a nonprofit that I'm on the board for and I'm a volunteer coordinator for and do the back end stuff for and do videos for. You know, a DJ for for a living. I have a podcast. You know what I mean? It's like there's so many there's so many things. There's so many things that you can do when you just realize that you can fucking do it. Like I I opened up for Joel Corey at Nodo. Like what the fuck? I'm just a kid from Northeast Philadelphia. Like I'm not special. Nothing special about me. But when you put yourself in the right places, when you believe in yourself a little bit, you'd be surprised what can happen. You know? That's just my biggest thing. Just believe in yourself. You know? Just believe in yourself. And the, Anyone watching this, I mean, seriously, like if you support the podcast and if you support me in any type of way, thank you. Like If you're my friend, thank you. If you come out to my DJ gigs, thank you. Everybody wants to be somebody, you know? I think when I was 16 years old, that's the the biggest issue I had is I wanted to be somebody so bad. I wanted my ex to see me doing well. I got obsessed with that. I didn't even get into the shit, the heartbreaking stuff I went through with her but because it doesn't matter anymore. Because it doesn't matter anymore. But it's what it's taught me. And as I go into 2023, I hope this is the biggest year of my life. You know, so many things in my life that I'm working on, you know, building that I'm super excited for, you know, um, and trying to do shit that's different or trying to do things that are a little out of the box for me is so normal now. You know, when I was 16 years old, heartbroken, lost her grandma. Didn't know what I was going to do with my life, trying to impress everybody, trying to do the most, trying to do student council, you know, to be on the basketball team and be seen. It, it taught me to try to be somebody, you know, not be someone that's just the same as everyone else. Enjoy and you know, get the most out of life. And I'm still learning. I'm not saying I'm perfect. Like I said, I've heard a lot of people in my life and I have a lot of flaws that I'm trying to get rid of this year it's my biggest thing i think for 2023 my biggest my biggest um my biggest resolution is dependability i want to be someone that can be counted on and i don't think i've because of some of my bad habits i have i haven't been to the people that i love you know we're all learning and I just wanted to do this because I feel like a lot of people don't know why I do what I do or why I want to do what I do. And to the people that have, um, you know, to the people that have talked shit or hate me or against me, like, thank you. You know, all of it's been a learning lesson and a lot of all of it's taught me things, you know, and, and to the people that I've heard, I'm sorry. I truly am. It's a version of myself that was hateful. Version of myself that was petty, spiteful. I want to move forward from that, truly. Um, you know, that's just how I feel. Um, but I hope everyone that watches the podcast and listens can truly get something from it. And I hope you guys can continue to enjoy listening to it and get stuff from it. Um, I have so much planned. I'm excited for. Um, and just seriously, thank you. Like, like I said, the podcast saved my life. It really did. And it sounds so weird to say, but it's everything that I've talked about in between that it's given me. You know. It's giving me friends. It's giving me meaning. It's giving me, you know, it's giving me something to do every single week, a creative outlet that I can build on, you know? So seriously, though, like, I guess I got to thank the loft, right? I got to thank the loft, my parents' loft. Started off my parents' loft. 
that's how it started. And ever since then, it's been just been an, it's been a, a creative outlet every day that I look forward to thinking about or or doing or learning or improving on. You know, it's the you improve a little bit every day. You'd be surprised what your how much your life can change in six months. You know, I want to start taking care of myself, be more fit, just take care of my body. Hopefully, dry January goes well. It's funny people don't believe me when I say I'm not drinking because it used to be such a part of me. I used to rely on drinking to be social. I used to rely on it to be out, honestly, because of the issues I have in myself. You know, I'm not saying that I'm like sad or depressed, but alcohol sure as hell helped, you know? I think I'm learning to start, to, to truly start building meaningful connections. You know, so I'm excited for life. You know, I've a lot had a lot, a lot of losses recently. Shout out to my Papa Nichols, my dad's dad. That was such a hard. That was that was tough. Papa Nichols was one of the best people I ever met. For a lot of reasons that some people won't know about. But um, and thank you to my family too. Seriously, my mom, my dad, like my sister, like just thank you for believing in me, caring about me and just seeing the best in me. You know, I, I could thank everyone. And it's just, it's just, you know, I just feel like I needed to speak on this. I just tell my story a little bit, you know, before we continue with the pod. I feel like never really done that before, you know. So um, thank you guys so much for, for watching this and listening to this. And hopefully you can take something from this. Um, my final advice would just be. My advice would just be to like, be a good person and you never know what someone's going through and learn from everything you've been through, whether it's good or bad, all feelings are fleeting. They don't stay forever. You know, um, you just never know. Like I said, that's, and you'd be surprised how far you can go with just an idea with just a thought or with just one action put towards it a day, you know, for something you love, just do it. That's the biggest thing. Like if there's something you're passionate about, go for it or something you're interested in, go for it. Don't let this fucking neighborhood or this, this fucking mindset get in your head. Don't let it ruin who you are or who you want to be. You know, shout out to the people that are just trying shit. You know, like ASAP Rocky says, how are you going to knock somebody for trying something? You know what I mean? Like, like I, 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 every single, day, every single time I go out, it's funny. Every single time I go out to the bar and I talk to somebody, someone mentions the podcast, how they love it, whatever. Someone who says what? And, and during the conversation, the funniest part is the funniest thing is during the conversation, it's just happened. They go, yeah, you're actually a cool dude. You're not a bad person. I'm like, I mean, I don't know who you're talking to, but who you talk to, but, and they say, I'm not gonna lie, Kev, like a lot of people talk shit on you. I'm like, yeah, I bet they fucking do, but let them. It's fine. I got what I, I got. I know where I'm going. I got my people with me. I know who, I know who I'm with now. I know who, who care about me now. You know, I'm 26 years old. I'm so young. <laughs> I'm young. Got a lot of time left. Hopefully, you know, um, and I'm just getting started. And 2020 is like when I've really begun to put myself out there, you know, really begin to to try shit. And I'm excited to see where I can go, to be honest with you. And I don't know why I just felt compelled to make this, felt compelled to put this together. So for everyone who's been watching, everyone who, just, who supports me genuinely, just thank you. And to the people who hate me, thank you. I'm not because I'm not going to stop, you know. Um, this is the most open I think I've ever been on the pod. But, um, yeah, if you see this episode, thank you so much. And I'm excited to see where this goes. My name is Kev Nichols. This has been, <laughs> you've been watching The Loft. Peace.